I'm not going to waste your time. Number one, find your purpose. Now, if you don't know your purpose or if there's other guys around you your age that don't know their purpose, you'll be able to see it clearly. A young man who doesn't know his purpose, he drifts along. He he doesn't have like this, this direction that he is taking himself and the world into. And so he just kind of... You know, he, he stumbles along and he gets an impulse to play some video games and so he plays some video games. He wants to do this thing so he does this thing. His life is filled up with his, his cravings or the, the duties that other people have put onto him, like the teachers or maybe his boss. And maybe you can relate. There's been times in your life, maybe right now, where you're just kind of reacting to re events. You're not really doing anything. You're not pushing the world into a certain direction. And this usually happens when you don't really have a purpose. So if you've heard of the term purpose before, it seems a bit vague, doesn't it? What I would do before you really understand purpose, just simply change the word to mission. You need a mission. You need like one of those, like it's like a North Star, like a big goal that is so important for you. So what could be your mission? It could be, for example, to get an awesome degree. Most degrees aren't worth it. We all know that. We, we know that university is largely a scam, but there are a good handful of degrees which are very, very high quality, right? Some degrees you absolutely need to get into the job that you want. So maybe it could be okay to get the degree that you need. Maybe it could be to start building up this successful business. Maybe it's to, you know, make some friends because you don't really have that right now and, and we need a tribe around us. We need like this mission, this purpose, this, this reason for why we're waking up. Now, purpose seems like such a vague concept up, up until you literally just break down what the, the word means purpose. What's the purpose? Purpose is kind of like the why, the because of everything that you do. And we can get very spiritual here. I'm going to give you like a little bit of the spirituality, which I know it's probably going to be confusing, but it's just going to plant some things into your brain, which will be helpful. So purpose is entirely spiritual. And most guys have never even opened up like their spiritual life. I may be level two in this area and it goes up to level 10,000. So there's a lot of progress to be made, but I can tell you something from my own perspective. We... We were born on this earth to, to give something. It's almost like we're supposed to be martyrs, sacrifices. And each man has his individual gift that is covered in, in so much bullshit, in propaganda, in narrative that we've heard from teachers and parents and, and everything else. But each, each man was born a boy with this specific gift, this, this, this truth, this real thing that his life should have been centered around. And with your parents conditioning, when they said, oh, you're going to grow up to be such an amazing fireman and this and this. And then you watch those Hollywood movies for all of your life. It's got covered with so much stuff that we don't even know what our core purpose is anymore. The why of our life, the because of our life. And so if you want to find your purpose and your mission, you can set a mission right now and it's like a real world mission of like, yeah, like, you know, go to university and make some friends and maybe get some girls. And that can still give you some direction, which is nice. But if you really want to find your, your purpose in like the most spiritual way, turn everything off. None of your peers, like all the guys your age will never do this. Turn everything off. Literally grab your phone and fully turn it off your laptop, your computer, fully turn it off, sit in a room where there's no electronics on, where there's nothing to do, there's no distractions. And I promise you, sit here for six hours, just get bored as fuck, literally just sit here and just kind of like, look at, sit around, look at your walls, bored, 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 bored. That will be some of the most valuable time of your life, I promise you. How many pe how many guys do you actually think have done this in this modern day? Be honest, how many guys have actually done this? Of the entire, like, you know, of our entire country, of 60 million people, 300 million people, how many guys have done this? Maybe a hand few, maybe the guys in prison. And even then they still distract themselves. Even then they still have phones in there. 
Most people distract themselves and so you never see the truth of your core. And this was me, like I lived my entire life not really having this clear purpose, this mission. And so I just kind of did what I thought I was supposed to do. Go to university. Okay, it's time to get like a job now. Oh no, I don't like jobs. It's time to start business now. And all these things are shallow. All these things are shallow because they don't come from the real place core inside of you. And it was only in 2020 when I moved back to my parents' home in my bedroom that I grew up in as a kid that I started to detach away from a lot of technology and to just sit with some some negativity, some discomfort. If you imagine this right now, imagine if you just started to spend some time, like minutes, hours a day doing nothing, not even trying to think about stuff, literally just like being bored, looking at your wall, no YouTube videos playing, no music or any, no fucking lo-fi beats to study slash find your purpose to, literally just sat there. You can do this, right? It seems easy and I, it seems easy. It seems like this is one of those steps of this video that you may as well skip, right? It seems easy. I bet you wouldn't even do it. I bet you're not even like strong enough to do this because when you try after about three minutes, 99.9% .9 of guys will give up because 99.9% .9 of guys are quite mediocre. But the 0.1% of men, they're the ones who actually go on to like change the world. And every single one of these strong leaders, these men that change the world, that help their tribe, that become ultra successful, we're talking hundreds of millions, billions, every single one of them are great thinkers. And that comes from some periods where you are supposed to find your purpose and you just sit and think. In the modern day, we don't do this. We don't take time to think. It's seen as weird. But if there's one thing you could take from me so far, take some time to think about your purpose. Think about the reason why you're doing anything at all. And there's going to be a particular moment where you'll fall through the bullshit that you've been covering your life in. And you'll start to ask the kind of questions that your family and your friends will think that you're crazy for. But I won't. And men like us won't. And number two, the second life lesson is to believe in yourself. Now this sounds very clickbait and cliche. <clears throat> I always waited for permission I don't know if you've had a similar like upbringing to me, but I, I'm the youngest sibling. I have an older brother who's two years older. And so it was either with him or with my father, they had to like give me permission to do anything in life when I was growing up. Literally as much as what items I would buy on RuneScape. So me and my brother both played this game called RuneScape. It's kind of like World of Warcraft if you played it. And on it, you know, you have your, your character, you have like the levels you can get up and you have like goals that you've accumulated. It's like one of those games that, you know, you can play for like 10 years, you have the same character, right? And after years, I saved up like 600K in gold, which isn't a lot, but I was, wasn't very good at the game, but I saved like 600K. And I always wanted to get this one shield, which was like a um, Zamorok shield, right? Zamorok kite shield. And I always liked it. I always wanted to get it. And I like, I kept on mentioning it, but my brother kept on like shouting and saying, no, it's stupid. You should like, you know, he's being aggressive towards me when I would always mention it. And then one day, like I literally got like, the, you know, like, oh, it's my money anyway. It's my account. Like, I'm just going to do it anyway. And I bought it. And I remember like, it's almost like I sat there awkwardly thinking like I needed my brother's validation to keep it. And so I awkwardly mentioned it to him. I, I got the uh, Zamrock kite shield. And he goes, no, well, you're stupid, you stupid idiot. Like he's, my family's, I'm getting pissed off even just telling this story to be honest, but my family's very like traumatized and abused and shit. So obviously his response is a bit fucked, but yeah, he's literally like swearing at me saying, you're a stupid, like with a, but I'm still resentful for that shit, bro. I'm a little fucking kid. And let me just buy my fucking Zamrock kite shield. But yeah, he's, he's fully abusive towards me. And he literally like pushes me to sit down and to sell it again. So, and this is just one instance, right? This is like, imagine this level of control that I've had on me from the items I can buy on a video game. And so imagine for the rest of my life, when I'm making bigger decisions, should I go to university? What study should I, what uh, topic should I study? Should I move out to university? 
And imagine having people like this. My, my dad was kind of like this, but a lot more like physically abusive. So I didn't, I didn't really have like the kind of support system that, that, you know, like the perfect father and perfect big brother would say, you know, if a little, little us went up to them and asked them, wait, should I do this thing? What's the best response your father or your brother could have ever given to you? When you go up to them and say, wait, should I do this? They'll sit there for a few seconds and say, what do you think? There's power in that question. What do you think? If you were going to pay me to do like a coaching session and you asked me a good question of like, wait, should I do this thing? I would hope that I was aware enough of, of you know, the strategies to coach someone that I wouldn't just tell you the answer. Because if I told you the answer, you'd just believe in me, right? I wouldn't need to believe in yourself. And so I'd ask you, what do you think? And so the next time you have some decision to make, whether it's small or big, just ask yourself that question. What do you genuinely think? And here's the thing, right? You might be slightly more successful at the things you do if you just follow what your father or your brother does, especially if you want to be just like them. Now, if you don't want to be just like them, you probably shouldn't take their advice, especially if they're not even that rich or successful, right? If your like, father's a full-on multi-millionaire, okay, maybe it's actually really worth seeking his guidance. If your brother's a top-level athlete, okay, sweet. But if they're not actually that successful, you should just be wary. It sounds offensive, but it's not from my words, but it's from the words of Alex and Rosie, one of the, I, I, I believe, one of the greatest entrepreneurs of our time. And he has this, this set, like phrase, which is that if you want to stay, if you want to make sure that you won't become rich, take advice from poor people. And I could say the same thing, like take advice from fat people, from slightly unfit people, if you want to make sure that you don't become an athlete. Believe in yourself. So the next time you've got some decisions to make, which is going to be very soon, because sometimes they're not very big decisions. Sometimes it's literally just what should you eat? Which one of these things should you buy? It would be so much easier for you if you had your brother or your dad to stand there and say, wait, how about this? Or no, 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 this one, this one. But the more decisions that you take, the more that your brain will develop. You see, everything we do causes like, you know, the neurons and stuff in our brains to like connect together. They connect the dots. And that's how we learn. And we don't want to take that process away. We want to learn and make our decisions ourselves, And of course, we still want guidance. We still want to ask our brother, like, what would you do in this situation? Okay, that's what my brother would do. What would my father do? Then we read some books of some guys that we like. What would they do? Then maybe we research some guys that we like and, and we look at their podcasts or something. What would they do in this situation? Okay, now you've got like a tribe of mentors who are giving you all their opinions and then you make the decision because you start to believe in yourself because either one, you believe in yourself because you already are capable, which isn't likely if you're watching a video like this, but two, you should believe in yourself because the way that you become capable is by believing in yourself. If you're always waiting for daddy to answer your questions, you're not going to become that capable kind of guy and you'll never be able to believe in yourself. You need to be okay as a young man to make some wrong decisions. It's going to be okay. Some people in our lives have acted towards us that if we make the wrong decision, that it's catastrophic, that it's such a problem that, you know, school has taught us this to be safe, haven't they? They've, they've taught us that we should study so much and that if you get a bad grade, it's like, oh man, like, you know, I, I've fucked up, I've made a mistake, I'm, I'm a failure. But in the real world, the most successful guys, guess what? They're all failures. I failed seven businesses before this one. Now I make more money than all of your school teachers put together, then doubled and maybe still doubled after that. And I failed more times than I can count. Believe in yourself. Number three, this is very interesting. I don't know if you've seen this propaganda. Work hard. In the last few years, especially on this space of guys giving advice online, there's been this new narrative that we should work less, we should work smart, that we should work less hours. And I've been a big pusher of this because I grew up reading books like The 4-Hour Work Week and Deep Work, which say, okay, we should only work for a few hours a day. And I think this is something again from the same entrepreneur. This is a top level guy, right? Alex Hermosi. This is something that he said in, in one of his videos. He said, like, I think we need to make working cool again. And he told this story, which I'll tell you my version of it, actually. I achieved like a lot of people's dreams. Less, 
around two years into YouTube, no, around one and a half years into me making this YouTube channel, we were already far above 100K subscribers. And I was making more than 10, 20,000 pounds a month, right? So my income like for the year was about $200,000 for the year as just like a, like a guy who just sits in his in his room and just makes videos right and the thing is i'm not like a i'm not even a materialistic guy i don't even spend that much money i literally i don't even buy like new fucking clothes or anything i still live at my parents house and i, and I actually love it it's like a, it's actually like a, literally this is a 10 out of 10 environment for me i'm so fucking productive and happy here right so i made this like huge amount of money and i semi-retired at age 23 24 so this is a bit of a, like an unrelatable story, but let me just tell you, because this is a lot of people's dreams, right? Make a successful business that pops off within a year and you're making 20,000 pounds per month that now you don't even need to work because the work that I needed to do was literally to record a few videos a week that used to take me around two to three hours. Think about that. My work week, not day, my work week, was around two to three hours. That meant that most days I wasn't working and one or two days a week I'd record for like one hour, two hours. And I was making a fuck ton of money. And so I was living, what do you think this is? Like 90% of people are on Earth's dream, right? And I went down the narrative of like, yeah, so you know, once you make money, like you can then start to retire and just spend all day, like just doing what you love. And so I entered then for one year, actually like a negative, slightly depressive spiral of my life. I didn't do any bad habits. I was like, you know, really onto self-improvement. I didn't just start playing video games or anything. But I filled up my time with just like, literally just reading for 10 hours a day and you know, watching podcasts, watching YouTube videos because I didn't need to work anymore. So I was still exercising, I was still running, I was still meditating, I was still spending some time with friends, going to the gym and stuff. But there was a lot of, free imagine if you literally didn't need to work. I had so much free time in my day that I had nothing really to do. So the day would just kind of end without me really accomplishing something big in work. And I was so off, you know, like, so like pushed away from work because of this narrative of like, yeah, work less. Working less is so awesome, guys. And I kept on thinking to myself, I actually want to work more. And all I saw at the time, because I didn't know this one entrepreneur, but all I saw at the time was this like propaganda from, from honestly guys that, are, that seem kind of weak, that seem kind of like feminine who used to say the same things of like, yeah, you know, just, you know, just retire and then just do what you love and just spend all day smelling the roses and you don't have to work much guys. Like, and I was one of these guys for a while up until I achieved it. And I realized, bro, this life's actually fucking boring. I want to be a masculine man. I want to work. And it was like a paradigm shift for me where I realized like, wait, I've achieved what I wanted, the goal. And I still want to work, not because I want like even more money. I don't even need more money. It's literally just because I think a man is supposed to work hard. I think as a man, as like a masculine man, we feel like a shell of ourselves if we don't work hard. It's the truth. But school, again, like school, the education system and shit jobs have kind of conditioned us to think that, yeah, working's kind of dead. We don't want to work, you know, like we don't like that atmosphere. But when you actually find your mission and your purpose, when you set some goals that really mean a lot to you, working hard feels fucking awesome. It's it's 6.30 a.m. right now. I literally just woke up. I'm recording this video with like a smile on my face. Bro, I'm gonna work till about 9 p.m. today, every single day. And it, this isn't like, you know, me boasting I'm a, I'm a hardcore entrepreneur or anything. This is like literally like, I, I, I wouldn't even know what else pe people would spend their time with. In the middle of this, you know, from 6.30 a.m. to 9 p.m., of course, there's breaks, I go to the toilet, I shower, <laughs> I eat food and I exercise, I go on runs, I read and stuff. But like my entire day is productive now. I'm working hard all day. And this is the best I have ever felt in my entire life, genuinely. You become quite intuitive to feel, okay, when am I working too hard? And usually for me, that's when I've got like, you know, like a deadline coming up and I've got a bunch of bullshit tasks that I don't want to do. But when my hard work is simply like, oh, I'll record this nice YouTube video and hop on a call with this guy because he's struggling right now and this and this and this. And, a, and an entire day like that, I feel like I've worked hard, but in a very pleasant way. 
So I want to actually further the message again from Alex Amozi, which I saw, I think on like a podcast or a video of his, where he said that we need to make working hard cool again. We need to make active income cool again. He was talking about passive income and active income. And the passive income scam is like something that's so modern these days. Like everyone's saying how to get passive income because we, you know, ev truthfully, everyone's turned into a pussy these days. Men are supposed to work. It's just simply the point of our lives. It's some, we're supposed to work. We're supposed to find purpose and meaning in our work. These days we don't find it. Why? Think about it, Rick. You want to get fucking deep? Why? Why are so many men these days, why maybe are you not really like so aligned that like working hard is important? Because 100 years ago at this age, we would have been married and we would have had children. And so we would have thought working hard was a necessity. We would have thought it's our duty. These days, we don't even have families. We are the first generation of men who don't have families in like their 20s. And see how depressed everyone is. See how directionless every guy is. Now, if right here, like, you know, you're going to start panicking. Thinking, no, no, but I couldn't have a family right now. Sure, we couldn't just click our fingers and give you like a pregnant wife and kids, right? But if you knew relatively that you were probably going to get into a family at age 20 when you were like 10 years old and you knew, yeah, like, you know, like everyone, you know, it was a normal belief that, yeah, everyone gets married and has children at, at age 18, 19, 20 then you would have already developed yourself to be the kind of man who could who could be capable for that. This modern day, like, inventions of, of teenagehood, like, you know, the fact that we don't consider teenagers, like, adults, like, especially of males, it, it's, it's, it's barbaric in a, not even in, like, a good way. It's, like, it's actually bad for people. Like, literally, like, when you look around right now, I know what I'm saying is crazy, that, wait, we, we, we should work teenagers harder and everything but when you look around right now like no one's that happy are they even the people who are like skiving off work who don't want to work hard think about the person who doesn't want to work hard he's still not happy is he that guy who doesn't want to work hard so he just smokes weed and he just plays video games and he just watches porn and masturbates he's still not a happy guy is he he's on antidepressants so why the fuck are we trying to be like him the happiest men you want to know the happiest men around You've probably not even seen any of them because they're so rare. They're all in families and they've all got lots and lots of children. They've got a house in the countryside. They've got lots of dogs. They've got a job, which isn't like some high level, high, you know, entrepreneur. Look at me. I've got like a nice rock, uh, watch or some shit, right? But they've got a job that they think, one, they actually somewhat enjoy. Two, it's challenging. And three, it makes enough money for them to provide for their family. Those are the happiest, most productive men. And they also, pretty much all of them are religious. Think about how different that, that man is from the kind of men that we have been raised to be. The kind of t spotty teenage boy hunked over at his desk. Like that's, which life do you really want to have? I think we need to make working hard cool again. I think it's fucking awesome when I speak to a young guy and he tells me he's working hard on something. Even if he's not even getting results right now. Even if he's unsure of the direction, you know, that if you don't even know the direction that you want to go in, the faster way to find out what to do with your life is to start fucking running down one pathway at least to see if you like this path. So we're so scared to, you know, to work hard. We're so scared to make decisions of which direction to go. Well, you can find that out by actually like putting in the effort. The volume is really important. Young people today, young men, we don't know what hard work actually is. And it takes a few years to develop that. It's very valuable. This is something for you, I'm telling you right now. If you want to be successful, if you want to feel masculine, if you want to provide for your future family, you're not going to get there by, excuse me, but you're not going to get there by simply working smart. I promise you. It takes an incredible level of luck and the right timing and skill and support to work smart and get successful from that. And even if you get the best case scenario like I did, like I got literally everything you could want. I worked smart. I didn't even work that like that hard. Were, to be fair, I did. Even then, no, you know what? I worked smart, but I worked smart in, in like a hard way, you know, for the first like year or so. Because I still didn't play any video games. I didn't do any bad habits for like a year, a year and a half. Imagine that. I did no bad habits. I didn't watch porn, play video games, take drugs, eat junk food or anything. Go on social media. I didn't watch a single movie or anything for over a year and a half. 
So sure, my, my hours of work was quite low, but like my brain was very healthy and you know, there was a lot of hard work involved with that, that sacrifice that I made. Number four, take responsibility. There's a book that I like by Jocko Willink, which is Extreme Ownership. And this is a mindset that I started to take on years ago to the point that it's become quite normal in me and this is what we want for you. Take responsibility for 100% of the things that happen in your life. I remember a video that I made years ago went viral. It's got like too many views. It's like the, the channel trailer. When you click on my like little picture, it's the channel trailer that shows up. The full guide to self-improvement. Where I said, I gave this analogy like years ago, which I still really like, which is we should think that anything that happens to us in our lives is our responsibility. Imagine we're, we're in a cafeteria right now. You know, it's lunchtime. And imagine if someone bumps into us and they say, oh, we, you know, they've spilled all this stuff there, right? Now, a lot of guys, who, weak men who want to escape hard work, they'd want it to be clear to everyone that it's not their responsibility, it wasn't me. But again, imagine the top tier leader, imagine Winston Churchill, imagine Jordan Peterson, imagine Andrew Tate, imagine the guys that you might look up to and you know, like a, a random person bumped into them and they, oh, they spilt everything. Would these strong men, would Jordan Peterson say like, oh guys, it wasn't me, it's not my responsibility. Or could you imagine Jordan Peterson actually saying to the person who bumped into them, oh, sorry, come on, I'll help you clean up. On like the, these successful, like you could think of any good leader right now, you could think of any masculine man. And truthfully, if he's like an actual successful masculine man, he would genuinely be on his hands and knees, wiping up the floor with the person who actually, whose like fault it is. But these masculine men would have taken responsibility for it. So why don't we? How about you start to see responsibility like a skill? Like, you know, in, in video games, we had different skills, didn't we? We had the magic skill and the attack skill and this skill and this skill. What if you start to see responsibility as a skill and, and realize that your responsibility skill level, you're a noob. You're a noob in this skill because you don't take much responsibility. But if you start to gain XP, experience in this responsibility skill by just constantly, you know, looking out for the opportunities where you can take responsibility for something, whether it's a mess on the floor, whether it's making money for your family, or it's helping someone, or it's doing something, or it's saying something. If you take more and more responsibility and gain experience and levels in this skill, it will mean that you can become more independent and actually do, like, be capable of more things yourself. Because a man who's responsible for the mess on the floor can go on to be responsible for a family. But a man who won't be responsible for the mess on the floor, think about how much responsibility he's gonna take with his family, with his work, think about it. The guy who, who wouldn't clean up that mess in that situation I'm telling you about, the guy who'd be like, you know, the pussy, and this is most guys, this is probably you, this is me for most of my life, right? Oh yeah, yeah no, guys, it wasn't me. You know, you'd, you'd be hoping that everyone knew that and you'll kind of silently just go like sit somewhere else, right? Because we're all fucking awkward these days. Well, that kind of guy, if you wouldn't take responsibility for this, chances are you're not gonna take responsibility for actually making some real money, for actually providing for your family, for actually finding like a good woman. So we've got to take responsibility for these small things. And this is why you've probably seen a lot of those cringe videos and pieces of advice of people saying like, oh, make your bed. You've heard that advice before. Yeah, make your bed. Oh, if you want to make a million dollars, start by making your, be your bed. Well, the reason why successful people say this, Jordan Peterson says this, David Goggins says this, that, okay, you've got to start with making your bed. It's because you've got to take responsibility for something. It's not that making your bed, suddenly there's going to be cash in your bank account. Of course not. But making your bed will give you some responsibility experience. It will get, you know, some XP in this skill. It'll give you some momentum so you take more responsibility throughout the day because, you know, it's going to be in your mind, yeah, I'm making my bed because I want some responsibility XP because Hamza mentioned it in his video. And you'll start to take more responsibility and, and suddenly you'll start to take responsibilities for some big things like making a fuck ton of money so you can provide for your family. How can you expect to do that when you wouldn't take responsibility for anything else? Number five, show respect. I think showing respect and being polite and having manners is a fantastic part of your character, which you can develop very easily. Now, I was born in Pakistan and my family moved here to the UK when I was about two years old. And the British has this 
this kind of very polite culture, which I've always, always really resonated with. You're taught from a very young age to say please and thank you. And you show this sign of respect to your fellow person that it's so normal that everywhere you go here, people are saying, please, thank you, sorry. And it's like this basic level of respect, which makes you seem like a good member of your society. It makes you seem like you're a, a gentleman. Now, I actually think there's one level we can go past this. So, okay, show respect, have manners, be polite. That's awesome. One thing that I really do find interesting is that people who are polite often are still going through some shit in their minds. Still, some people who are really polite and they've got manners, they're still actually bad people. You can't actually have this weird mix where you can be outwardly manipulative in a certain way. A lot, Quite a lot of people are like this, quite like psychopathic people, quite nice and generous, but because they know that it will benefit them in some ways. And inside of their brain, they're actually quite negative and dark. And so one thing that I can tell you that would really help you, if you can relate to what I'm saying, is like, okay, maybe you're a bit polite and you know, you've got manners, but inside of your mind, you're actually a bit of an asshole and you know this, right? It might be worth to try and condition your brain to be nicer to people. So not just to be nicer to people, but to program your brain to like literally the thoughts that you get to make them actually more positive. Because, you know, right now, like, you know, saying, yeah, make sure you say please and thank you. That's like level one. That's like forcing someone to do something. But if we can make someone genuinely love other people, that person's going to be polite anyway, aren't they? And so there's two ways to do this. One is through a practice called loving kindness meditation. So just like you've probably heard of meditation. So just like the way we meditate, you know, which we'll focus on our breathing. There's another meditation style where instead of focusing on your breathing, you actually focus on like love and positive thoughts and, and feelings towards people. So instead of, you know, like oh, inhale, exhale, you'll literally just close your eyes and you can do this with me right now. Close your eyes and just picture someone in your community. And just think to yourself, like, they're actually probably a good person. And they've probably got a lot in common with you. And, you know, the fact that they live nearby. And you could actually genuinely think really highly of this person. You could think of, of a bunch of good things about them. So why don't you? Why don't you be this, this guy right now? Why don't you just think about this person? And actually say the words in your mind, like, I love you. I'm grateful for you. I'm glad that you're in my community. I'm glad that my, my memories, my existence, my consciousness has you in them. Thank you for wait, making up the, the world, the experiences that I get to enjoy as a human being. It's a very, very powerful practice. And this kind of meditation has been shown to increase like compassion in people. It's been shown to essentially make people more empathetic and compassionate to each other. But there's one more thing like that, to be honest, some people really like it. But to me, it's never really worked that well. It's like it's like some nice goofy thing that I can try every now and then. But I never got into doing it consistently. But there was a different mindset, a, an analogy that made a bigger difference for me. And it's from the book, The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. And the analogy is to assume that your brain is a thought factory, like a factory where things are produced, right? And this factory is run by either two foremen, two bosses or two managers, Mr. Triumph and Mr. Defeat. Mr. Triumph comes in and he produces the thoughts that make you feel positive, pleasant, happy, joyful, loving. Mr. Triumph will come in and produce the thoughts that say, oh, there's that person that I usually see. Good for them that they're out on this run today. That's awesome. I'm actually really glad this person's in my community. Look, there's a cute family there. It's awesome seeing that stuff. The weather's good, the sun's nice, the, the nature looks so good, the, the architecture of these buildings is so nice. It's a good day, it's gotta be a good day. I've got some good work, I'm happy, I'm healthy, all of my family's healthy. Mr. Triumph produces these thoughts. But Mr. Defeat, 
which the defeat comes into work and produces the thoughts that says, this is a shit day. I'm already tired. That prick has done, oh, why hasn't she messaged me back? She's probably cheating. She's a hoe. Oh, that guy's a dickhead. They look weird. That's a f that guy's fat. Mr. Triumph and Mr. Defeat, right here, right now, which, which thoughts would you rather have generated in your brain? Because the truth is, we actually know for a fact that happy people are more successful. Happy people make more money. So it's like, one, they get to be happier, which is nice. And two, they also make more money. So it's like, okay, fuck it. Like, we don't want to be some depressed, sad piece of shit, do we? We don't want to be this guy who's overthinking and feeling negative and hostile and aggressive towards people. We'd rather be the guy who actually thinks positive about people. And so we need to give Mr. Triumph more work. And the way we do this is to simply just even like cue our brain to call him into work more often. Now that you know this analogy, you could literally say to your brain in like a goofy way, Mr. Triumph, what do you think about this? And Mr. Triumph will only produce positive, loving thoughts. So you're going through a problem right now. There's, there's some bullshit happening in your work. You're, you're struggling on this question or this moment or this decision. You could literally say to yourself, okay, what would Mr. Triumph tell me? Mr. Triumph, what do you think about this? And he'll say, oh, well, it's probably just a misunderstanding. They probably didn't mean to like trigger you in that way. Maybe you're just a little bit emotional. How about you hop on a call with them and just tell them how you feel and I'm sure that they'll make it up to you. Now that would be nice, but most of us don't realize that Mr. Defeat is actually running our brain right now, automatically. And so when we go through some obstacle and you know, there's some message from someone that we don't like, Mr. Defeat's already said there saying, yeah, they're this, they're this, here's some emotion for you. You know, you should act emotional as if that was ever good for you. And they've done this. And I bet they're gonna do this in the future. And I bet they're thinking this about you right now. And I bet the other person is involved in being a bad person to you too. And suddenly without any actual real logical, rational information, you've got so emotional because you became so negative in your mind. So why don't we give more work to Mr. Defeat? Why don't we tell Mr. Defeat, come in for overtime. I'll pay you for overtime. Come in and work around the clock and keep producing these thoughts of triumph. Sorry, why don't we, why don't we um, tell Mr. Mr. Triumph to come in and tell him to work overtime? Tell him, yeah, Mr. Triumph, come in and, and fire Mr. Defeat. We don't want him. He's, he's never served us well. Mr. Triumph is still going to tell us, come on, let, you know, let's, let's put in some work. He's still going to tell us not, not to get complacent, of course. But he's going to tell us to do it in a way of love. And so he's going to make us more respectful. Because being a disrespectful man is a it's a sin. It's a horrible look. Being the kind of guy who doesn't say thank you, being the kind of guy who doesn't even say sorry, like that's that's what gets you this term of this like red pill alpha male of these guys who say like, oh, well, I'll never apologize to a woman. I, I never make mistakes. And I'm just thinking, like, bro, you're telling me you never bang your little toe on, on the, the side of the bed? You're telling me you've never dropped anything? Because that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Oh, but I'm not sorry. Like, we don't need to be some, some weird assholes for this. You've got to understand the people in your life, like there's no point in having them unless you're actually going to love them and be kind and respectful towards them. This isn't some fucking power play with your family members, with your sister or your brother or something. So, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've lived life like, like, like that. And I'm not saying to just be a pussy then. But I'm saying the best case scenario is you get to the point where you actualize a lot of like the alpha male stuff and you realize that the best alpha males, like the, you know, the top tier men, they're all still gentlemen. They're all still extremely polite. There's guys out there who could genuinely kill you with their hands and they still say thank you to the waitresses. There's men out there who have made more money in the last year than your entire bloodline has for a hundred thousand years. And they still say please when they order something. So if they can do it, we can do it. Number six, embrace challenges. Kind of like the second point that we spoke into, like believe in yourself. I think it's important for you to embrace challenges and to, to understand that you're not always gonna feel totally, like it's easy to do something. So what I mean is, there's gonna be many points in your life like you have have experienced so far, where you're gonna be slightly scared of something that's about to happen, something that you could do. 
And the worst possible thing, you, you probably know this, right? When you've had a challenge that you feel a little bit scared about, if you've ever done the worst possible thing, you know it straight away. When you back out of that challenge and you don't even try because you got intimidated and you got scared and you, you, know, you just had this fear inside of you, that's the worst thing possible. As young men, I think we should embrace challenges. I think we should see some kind of challenge up ahead, whether it's this test coming up, whether it's this business or this competition or this thing that I've got to do, or maybe just record a video or go to this challenging workout. I think we should cue ourselves manually in our brains to think that we like challenges. We like to see how far we can push ourselves. You know, this reminds me of what I've learned about testosterone. Andrew Huberman is a really famous scientist. You've probably seen him, seen him on YouTube, Huberman Lab. And he's like this scientist that's been getting really viral with making these really high quality podcasts. And he made one on testosterone, which you can go and have a look at, which was really educational. And he ended up mentioning that one of the core parts of testosterone is not what everyone has been saying. You know, it's, oh, it's, it's just about masculinity. It's just about getting your dick hard or anything. He's actually near the start of this said, testosterone makes effort feel good. That was like his summary of testosterone, which was so interesting because I thought he was going to say like, oh, testosterone makes, makes you an alpha male or some shit or, you know, muscle or something. But it was just specifically when he said that testosterone makes effort feel good. Challenges, discomfort. It makes those things feel good to you. It makes pushing yourself hard feel good. You know, you always had that one friend when you were a little bit younger and you used to go to like sports class in school. That one, like those few guys in your class who seemed to enjoy actually pushing themselves hard. Whereas like for most of the guys in there with like, you know, moderate levels of testosterone, maybe quite low levels these days, we kind of like, we didn't actually enjoy or feel good pushing ourselves. Pushing ourselves hurt and it kind of felt negative. And so we didn't really do it that much, but there was those few athlete kids that literally loved to push themselves and they were always the ones who were like left standing up at you know those like slightly competitive challenges where it was like in the UK we had this thing called the bleep test where you had to just keep running from this line to this line to this line to this line on this like noise and essentially like you know people do it and within like a few minutes or even seconds the fat kids start sitting down because they can't do anymore then a bit more then it's like the skinny fat kids the un slightly unhealthy ones me <laughs> literally sit down okay then there's like the you know it's about the average kids now okay one by one they're starting to sit down they're just tired you literally just have to keep running from this line to this line this line to this line this line to this line and okay most kids are sat down there's like the top 20 percent of these like quite athletic kids and they're all challenging each other but then the few couple of guys they get too tired and then it's like the top three guys these competitive pretty much young athletes and they literally seem to enjoy this effort I could probably bet that those kids at that moment had a way higher testosterone than all the little chumps sat down and I was one of the chumps. Testosterone makes effort feel good. You have at least 10 times more testosterone than girls your age. Use it. Understand that when we push ourselves, we will actually feel good and we will actually feel better the more often that we push ourselves. So if it's like the first time that you're physically training your body and really, really pushing hard, it's gonna fucking suck. It's gonna be really painful. But if you're actually used to training hard as fuck, close to failure, really, really pushing, especially in the higher rep ranges, you know, when you do exercises and if you don't just do strength training and you do actually more like endurance training, you do, you know, 30 reps or something, then you can really see how fucking hard you can push. When you do that more consistently, you'll start to actually embrace these challenges and enjoy them more, which is a sign of testosterone. It's also a sign of just, you know, building up the strength and the psychological, uh, psychological like stories or, you know, like the things you would say in your brain as you're going through this shit. And David Goggins is a big guy for this as well. I think a lot of young men struggle to embrace challenges these days because why? Why would a young man these days struggle to embrace challenges? Maybe it's just the death of our testosterone levels. Maybe it's because we've all got like actually very low testosterone. What's interesting, I just got my testosterone results back uh, a few days ago. I did like a full on blood panel when I came back to the UK. And my testosterone levels were actually kind of low. They were, they were what they used to be like a year or two ago before I really ever like started to improve them. And it was like 400 nanograms per for the deciliter. You know, like the, the, the number's 400 essentially and the free test was like 0 0.3 or something like that, right? So it's it's still healthy and the doctors came back and said, oh yeah, it's still healthy. It's within the normal range, but it's 400. 
and that was mine. And I sleep pretty well. I don't take drugs, alcohol, medication, none of that bullshit. I don't smoke. I eat well. I take like pretty good supplements and everything. And mine was 400. I have no symptoms. So that's the thing. That's why I'm not really giving a shit because it's like, I don't even care about the number these days because my dick gets hard. My, my muscles being built. I'm losing fat. I still enjoy challenges. I enjoy work. So I don't really have any symptoms. So I'm not really caring about the low number, but it is interesting. So the science is proving technically that I've got healthy testosterone, but if you compared it with our great grandpas, they would literally think that this was like a fucking sickness going on with men our age. Chances are you probably have somewhere close to what I've got, which is like 400, 500 nanograms for the deciliter, which is very low. Our parents, like our dad, for example, he probably started with closer to 800 to 1,000. And our great, 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 like grandpas, you know, the start of like the 1900s or the late 1800s, they had well above like 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. And, and we believe, like I saw some sh some shit, I don't know if it's, this is real or not, I saw it in some like YouTube video, that like by the, in the investigation and research of like male skull shapes, and you know, you know, like there's people who dig up like skeletons and they, and they see that skulls have changed in shape 10,000 years ago, hundred thousand, you, you know, there's what, what's the job title, like archeologist or something, right? People will go and like, you know, investigate the skulls. They'll see human remains and investigate it. They found that human skulls used to look like fucking warriors. Like they used to have massive fucking jaws and like, like, you know, like this big brow raised, like caveman style skulls. Right. And they invest and they, they, essentially estimated that the testosterone of these like fucking cavemen would have been thousands of nanograms that per deciliter, which probably honestly, and I know it sounds kind of cool, but we probably wouldn't want it to be that high because if you did have caveman testosterone, you genuinely would be a rapist these days. You'd be a rapist and a murderer. You genuinely would, right? So of course we don't actually want it that high because civilization was fucking shit back then, but we probably still want to be like in the upper end. And so see my number, it concerned me in some ways because this is the scientific proof of like, okay, like I don't have low testosterone, but I don't, I, like I don't have enough. It, in a quantitative number, but I don't really have the symptoms. But even then I'm just thinking, bro, if this is how good I feel with 400 nanograms, like imagine if I just fucking took TRT and I was on more like a thousand and it was just consistent and it never went down. Even if you had like bad diet or bad sleep one night, you just had like a really, really good healthy level of testosterone where your dick gets hard multiple times a day. You enjoy these challenges. And imagine like, you know, you get this extra benefit through the day where you just start to enjoy the work that you do even more. And that could be something really valuable. TR, taking TRT has been something in, in my mind for a little while, if you are interested. And um, I don't think, you know, as like a young guy, you should consider it really that seriously unless you've really got symptoms. And if you do have symptoms, for example, if, you know, you, you really hate challenges, like that's the point of this point here, like in, embrace challenges. If you hate challenges, if you hate discomfort, if you hate pushing yourself because it just feels horrible, you may have low testosterone and it might be worth just having a look at that. Now, I do actually think that there's other reasons why young men aren't embracing challenges these days. And I think it's actually less about the hormonal reasons and it's more about the psychological reasons. I think from an early age, a lot of us have been conditioned to be like weaker and more feminine and to be like softer because a lot of us guys have been raised by single mothers, haven't we? Either we have we don't have a father in our homes or we do and our father was like out working really hard and he often didn't really get to like teach us well and so maybe our mothers taught us how to live life and how to be men, which mothers are literally incapable to do that. Or we went into the school system and they taught us not how to be men, but just, you know, how to be good students. And they taught us, yeah, sit down, be quiet, do this task, be feminine, gossip, talk quietly, guys. No, 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 don't run around, don't play, don't shove, don't do anything masculine, don't be loud, just shh, shh, shh. The seventh thing, cultivate a positive mindset. You know, these days in the self-help community, a lot of people this like downplay how important positivity is. It, it's seen as like this, this evil thing these days. You've probably seen like a little bit of this, a little bit of these YouTube videos where they're like, oh fuck positive thinking. Like, you know, this is stupid and stuff. Like, I don't care about thinking positive. The thing is, I think those guys are, are they're right in some ways. You know, you've, you've seen these people talk about like, oh, positive thinking is not actually that important or anything. These are quite like, no, these are normies who are saying this. Now, maybe you're a normie too. Chances are you're not if you've been watching my video for ages, right? For me, I've, I lived a life of negative thoughts 
And the moment that I realized that there was such a thing as positive thinking, my life changed forever and I actually became successful and happy because of that. Now I still fall back into negative thinking, but the difference of your life quality is immense. I make more progress when I think more positive because I still think I'm positively thinking when, I, for example, I'm putting a bit of pressure on myself and, and saying like, no, come on, you don't want to mess this up. You don't want to like, you know, miss this deadline or something. That's still positive for me. Sometimes I'll think about something negative and fearful and, and you know, some form of insecurity, like, wait, you know, like fear and you use fear to motivate you. So you think, wait, if I don't do this thing, this is what's going to happen and that'll be really bad. And that's still, I think, in some ways, that's still positive to do. But I don't think that we should be feel so negative about just saying positive things in our brain that would help us because it's helped me. So maybe if you're if you're not like me at all, then it might not help you. But if you're anything like me, and chances are you are because you've watched all this video and you've related to what I've said, then I think positive thinking will actually help you a lot more than like all these normies online seem to say that it would. So what we want to do to, to start positive thinking, it's very similar to that analogy I gave you, which is the Mr. Defeat and Mr. Mr. Triumph. That's essentially just like negative and positive thinking. And so I really like like these weird mental analogies for this. So I'm gonna give you another one. I really hope these help you as much as they helped me. And it's to imagine that we can choose what memories we think about. And a lot of people automatically, like accidentally choose the memories that make them feel like shit. Imagine that our memories are stored in this bank, you know, like, like a literally like a normal bank with, you know, they've got money and stuff, right? So we imagine in our mind, we can go to this bank and we can go to the bank teller and say to them, hi, Mr. Bank teller, I'd like to withdraw this memory of the time that I was a piece of shit and a disappointment to my father. And the bank teller will say, oh, well, certainly, sir, here's the memory. And here's another one, by the way, you know, here's a bit of interest. And you're like, oh, yeah, this is a memory where I was a piece of shit and my father's disappointed in me. Oh, this was, this was so, yeah. That's what most people do. Most people go to the, 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 their memory bank and ask the, ask the teller, can you give me memories that make me feel like shit, please? That's self-harming. That's not good for you. So how about we go to this bank teller and we say, excuse me, Mr. Bank teller, can you give me a memory of a time that I conquered a challenge? And they'll say, oh, certainly, sir. Remember that time in school that you did that thing and you conquered the challenge? And you're like, oh yeah, I did do that. And you start to feel better about this challenge that's in front of you today. Excuse me, Mr. Bank teller. Can you give me a memory of a time where I got the girl? Well, certainly, sir, here's a memory where you got that girl. And you're like, oh, yeah, like I did a tractor. It was kind of easy to. It's, how did I do that? Ah, I was quite laid back. I was quite masculine. I focused on myself a little bit and she, she found it kind of attractive. Maybe that's what I should do with this girl that I'm interested in. Excuse me, Mr. Bank Teller. Can you give me a memory of a nice fun day that I had with my family? I know we didn't have many of those, but can you just give me, surely there's a few in there. And he's like, certainly, sir. Remember this day where you and your family all ended up laughing about this joke together? And you just remember that and it's like, you just feel better and more positive and, and you know, straight after thinking this, you'd want to go speak to your family, wouldn't you? Straight after thinking of some challenge that you conquered, you'd want to be getting ready for the next challenge, wouldn't you? After having the positive memory of a time that you actually did well in like the dating scene or whatever it was, you'd be more likely to go and do that thing again. So most people, and maybe you, maybe me, most people, we're just withdrawing the negative thoughts from the memory bank. And it, it doesn't serve any real purpose to do that. They're just thinking about defeat and failure, like, oh man, no, but I, I, I'd probably fail again. Instead of thinking to themselves, okay, wait, I succeeded in this thing previously, and this thing, and this thing, and this thing, and this thing, I'll probably succeed again. This is some powerful stuff and it, this is seen as so cringe these days, but the old school success gurus that I really like, Jim, oh, what's his name? Jim, uh, someone will, will say it in the comments, Jim Collins, Jim, Jim Crow, Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn, Brian Tracy, David Schwartz. There's some good guys, like these old school type of guys who talk about positive thinking. And it was such a big thing back then in like the, the 1900s. That was like when it was really first coming out. And everyone, like these big successful businessmen really took onto it. And in our most recent 
times, you know, of the self-help YouTubers, the guys who've got skinny neck and long hairs and everything. And they're saying like, oh, well, positive thinking is actually a scam. It's like, bro, you don't even go to the gym. So how can I trust you? So if you're, if you can, you know, relate to me, positive thinking helped me and I think it would help you. Number eight, and we'll make this a quick one because you've probably seen this everywhere. Take care of your health. So I, I think that this is something that young men often look past. So right here, right now, probably you really, you, if we, if I asked you right now, how important is your health to you? You'd probably lie and say, yeah, it's the most important thing because you've been told by everyone else to do that, to say that, right? But if we actually ask you, okay, wait, be honest though, be honest. Do you go about the day thinking about your health? Do you actually, or do you just kind of think about what's the most important thing in your life? Is it money? It's getting girls. It's, it's usually not thinking about like, like health things. So most young guys these days, especially if you're watching a video like this, you're consuming the content and you're listening from guys who say, yeah, health is the most important thing, but you're not actually treating it like that. You're still only dedicating like seven or eight hours to bedtime instead of just adding an extra hour in there. It's going to sleep a little bit earlier, just literally closing off everything and just reading for the last like hour of the of the night of going outside for a walk every single day of your life. Like, that's extremely healthy. And often we miss this, right? So we've got to admit right now, like we don't actually prioritize our health as much as we actually say we do. Like, let's just be honest because it doesn't feel like we need to because we're young men and we don't feel any like negative symptoms of health, right? Well, I did for the first time ever for a, f a couple of months, not anymore, but for a couple of months, uh, the late part of last year, I actually experienced like what health problems feel like. My mental health went really bad. I moved to the city. So I moved out, right? And I moved to the city. And I, as soon as I got there, I felt overwhelmed. And, you know, I thought, oh, I just moved. It's, that's, it's because of that. But I, I realized afterwards that I had never actually adjusted well to cities. It just, for me, it, it just feels so fake. And, like, I, I'm very connected to, like, primal shit, right? Like, ancestors and cavemen. I, I can't explain it to you, but, like, I'm a very primal type of guy. Like, a, just a natural type of guy. And to me, cities are very unnatural, not just because of the buildings, but just because there's so many people there that you don't know. You don't know if these people are friend or foe, and most of them would be just neutral, but I don't think having people around you who are neutral, not friend or foe, is actually healthy. Like, this is a side tangent, but I think you'll actually find this very interesting. This is just something that I feel aligned to, like, my caveman ancestors, and I, I realized this once in the gym why probably a lot of people feel some levels of like anxiety when they go to the gym. You know why anxiety is so common? And the reason why is because we're all just pretending to be, like we're all just like slightly agreed on the fact that we're all just going to be neutral to each other, like you and the people in your nearby community, your, your, um, your city, for example. In a smaller town, like where I live now, it's different. When I walk past something like, you know, let's say there's an old couple there with a the dog, 99.999% chance it's like, yeah, they live here. They're essentially part of my community. They're going to be nice people. But when you're in the city, there's just complete random people. People are there for the day. Some people live there. Some people are students there. Some people work there. Some people commute in. Some people are shopping. It's like, it's not a community, right? So when you're in the middle of a city, everyone is, it, you, your brain doesn't get to class anyone in the categories of friend or foe. This is what our, our primal brain needs to do. Think about the caveman times, right? Our brains haven't changed from the caveman ancestors right the first thing that they would do when they'd see someone new is they needed within seconds to categorize them into friend or foe otherwise like our caveman ancestors would have died this was literally an evolutionary like strength to look at someone and straight away start to consider okay friend or foe friend or foe in the caveman times the primal times which our brains developed and have not changed since then no one was kept as like the neutral Everyone was categorized as friend or foe. You needed to know no one was neutral. Neutral wasn't an, a thing that ever existed. Everyone was labeled as either friend or foe. These days, when you go somewhere, most people we label as neutral, but that fucks our mind up because it's not like we need to know if they're friend or foe. This is why it feels awkward when like you're in the middle of a city and no one's holding eye contact with you. No one's smiling. No one's really that happy. Everyone's just head down, just like going to do their shit. And so you can't categorize anyone into friend or foe. And you can relatively, you know, think that, yeah, I'm, I'm still safe. It's a city, there's police and stuff. But I think it's unnatural, at least for me. There's people who, who do really well in cities and they like the hustle and bustle. I do really well with like some close people in the mountains, in nature, around trees, around like mud and stuff. Like that's, that's just who I am, right? So 
I didn't really think about this when I made the decision to move to London. So, uh, you know, I was ended up, I made a, like a fuck ton of money every month, right? So I thought, oh yeah, well, this is what successful people do. They, they, they move to the biggest city in, in the country and, and they get like a really expensive apartment. So suddenly I started renting an apartment for 5,000 pounds a month, which is very expensive for rent, right? 5,000 pounds a month. That's really fucking expensive, bro. Fuck me. Like the, the one, the apartment I had when I was a student, it was like 400 pounds a month. And this was 5,000. And, um, you know, it's this really beautiful apartment. The view's really nice and everything, right? But literally, it just, it felt so unnatural for me. And suddenly, I, I started to realize that my health was starting to deteriorate. I started to eat more. But I started to gain a lot more fat than usual. And suddenly, it's like I got to like 20% body fat, which was weird. And suddenly, I didn't even want to go to the gym anymore. It wasn't even about motivation. It was just like, I just didn't want to really leave the apartment at all. And then, you know, some things got worse. I, it was, it's, London's not very safe. And right outside of my apartment one day when I was I was um, looking through the window, I saw heard some shouting. I literally saw some guy get like full on punched up and got robbed. Like two two um, little crackhead looking guys. They robbed a, um, you know, like an Uber Eats driver. Like some guy was on his moped to deliver food to these apartment buildings. And the two guys just came and like literally jumped him, hit him on the floor and everything. And they took the bag of food, bro. Like I literally saw this guy get like savagely beaten, this Uber Eats driver who's probably from like Pakistan or something. He get beaten because these crackheads were hungry because they wanted to rob the food. Maybe they were probably trying to rob the school or something, but they just ended up taking the food, like the bag and running away. And I just hearing like the commotion and that was genuinely like, I was looking out the window. That was genuinely like right fucking there. One thing I will say is like, I, I, obviously I called the police, but like they actually did come very fast. Usually like London in the UK has this like criticism for the police, but they actually within literally like one or two minutes, they were already driving past. I don't know if they ever like found them or anything, but obviously like even if like one or two minutes is too late, you know, the, the guys already ran off the guy, the, the victim's already been beaten up and shit. And it was right in the spot that like, we had just been, me and my girl had just been for a walk yesterday in the dark as well. Cause I thought like this part of London was quite safe, but apparently not. So my mental health went worse then my physical health went worse. And I started to eat more junk food, which was very unlike me. I started to gain some fat, not go to the gym as much, maybe one time a week. And that was so unlike me. And then I moved to Dubai and then the air pollution there got me and everything. And suddenly like my health got significantly worse. Now I track my health on this ring called the Aura ring. This is really expensive, so you don't need to buy it. It's called Aura, O-U-R-A. It's like $300, right? So I track my health on this and all of my metrics was just getting worse and worse and worse, really worse. And that's when I realized like, oh shit, like, this is what it feels like to have poor health. You know, we always heard it from people, prioritize your health. And I realized, oh, like I have actually one of those people now who, who can actually tell you, okay, what bad health feels like. I wasn't productive. I wasn't happy. The, like I struggled to record videos after this. It was such a big problem with me. I had managed to record and upload a video daily for over a year, pretty much no problem. And about this time, it was so hard for me to sit down and record that my entire team would, you know, I had editors and everything and everyone was just waiting for me to record. And it's like, I felt incapable too, because I, you know, I had fucking headaches most days. I had like bloody snot and shit coming out. I had like, like this weird, like cough. I had like, um, like breathing problems. I was struggling to breathe. My heart rate was so fucking high on this ring my hrv was low and like my diet was getting worse my willpower was draining and my strength in the gym was going down my, my relationship was getting worse because i didn't even show like her any attention or love because i was like i was just starting to become like mindless and stuff it was just not the right environment for me and you know the decisions i was making made it worse so i experienced what it was like to actually have quite negative health and it's not good. Like, tr just trust me on it. Like, you know, a lot of people will tell you, yeah, make sure you prioritize your health, but they won't tell you what it's like when you've got shit health. Trust me, you're not going to be productive when you've got bad health. So the thing is, you know what to do. Eat cleaner, eat less of that shit food that you know is not good for you. Eat more of the good food, the meat, the vegetables that you know is good for you. Try and improve your sleep. Try and exercise every day. You do those things, you'll get most of the health benefits. You miss these things. Like for example, I stopped going to the gym and everything. And especially one, one quick tip extra I'll give you, you know, you've heard how important exercise is and, and the exercise we do is like, you know, going to the gym, lifting weights. That's awesome. You look good. You've gained some strength, but don't overlook cardio. 
So many guys in our space overlook cardio and think that it's not really important and stuff. Most of the, you know, the health benefits with exercise comes actually from cardio. There's still some health benefits with like strength training, weightlifting, building muscle and everything. But most of the benefits actually come from cardio. Literally just, just do 10 minutes of running every now and then. Do some extra walking, incline walking, stair master, cycling. Don't overlook that. There's so many bodybuilder, weightlifter guys who will tell you not to do it because it kills gains. It doesn't fucking kill gains, bro. I promise you right now, it doesn't kill gains. If anything, it just means that you're gonna have like a leaner bulk, like you're gonna burn some of the fat that's hiding behind, that's hiding in front of your, your muscle anyway. Number nine, learn continuously. I think one of the reasons why I have had a special advantage and I've, I've pushed past many other people in terms of how fast I've become successful and to the level that I've built is actually because still to this day, I'm still fucking learning. Like every, like you've seen, I didn't have like this stuff next to me for this video or anything. I, these books are next to me because I literally read every single day for hours and I see the fall of every successful like man, you know, in this space on YouTube, where as soon as they get a good level of success, I always, you know, I'm watching a lot of people and I always just see the same thing where I'm like, no bro, where a person on YouTube will get a good level of success and they'll mention that they don't read books anymore and they don't even learn anymore because they don't even have the time for it. And I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Like, you're here today because you spent so long learning. It's in every successful man's story that he'll start to like rigorously learn things that like really, really help. And it's months after that when he's been implementing the things that he learns, that's when he his success actually picks up. So this is something, again, this guy's a fucking legend, bro. Alex Hamozzi. This book is about sales and everything, so if you're interested, but what I'm talking about is Alex Hamozzi, right? If you can go search his name, literally, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I've done over the last few weeks. I've searched his name onto YouTube and I've watched every single podcast he's in. I'm making a fuck ton of money. Like I'm making a hundred thousand dollars a month now, literally just because I just followed his advice in this book and in this podcast. It's fucking amazing, bro. When you learn, the more you learn, the more money you make. It's it's that simple. Learning for a lot of us, right? It's been ruined because of what we've learned in school, isn't it? Because we, like learning in school was just fucking lame. We kind of knew that it was never really going to help us. When you are outside of school and you learn specifically about like business or careers or or, or skills, like, look. This, uh, my bed's next to me, right? So this isn't even like a bookshelf or anything. I, these books are literally just next to me because I fucking read every single day, bro. I read this book every single day and you learn so much. And so following this guy's advice and learning doesn't just need to be reading, by the way, it can be watching videos like this. Like usually consuming content is usually kind of bad if it's like, you know, if it's negative shit, if it's, if it's, um, emotional shit if it's not even educational but i think a video like what you've watched today is quite educational so you're learning from the things i'm teaching you and i think podcasts are really good so i watched every podcast that alex mosey was in and he said something that i found so interesting where he said that you should invest aggressively into your education. He said that people don't even bat an eyelid to go to university and spend thousands of, and get into debt and stuff only to not even have the promise to make more money. And he said people should do the same thing, but with online education. So the, the online education space gets a lot of like, like negativity these days. You know, there's someone selling a course, there's someone who's got a mentorship and everyone's seen as like a scammer for the first time. Like this guy is getting really fucking famous. Everyone loves Alex Amosi and I fucking love the fact that he's there right now telling Everyone. Like, like, stop thinking that it's a scam and just go fucking in, in, invest aggressively in this this program, this coaching, this mentorship, this, then this, and this. Because he says like, you should see each one of these as like one module in your entrepreneurship degree. And he says that his best investment by far has been on knowledge. And so that cleared like that when I was watching that I was like oh thank god you know all this time I've been watching these cr cringe fucking videos about like how to invest in real estate and stocks and stuff and like all of that just fried my brain I don't want to invest in all that pussy shit and just hearing this this very successful guy say like you should feel good about spending money on like these online programs that you see just gave me permission to be like man fuck yeah I've got a business card and everything let's fucking buy some I spent five thousand dollars on Ali Abdul's uh, YouTuber course and like the, the premium package and it's already fucking worth it i spent like 700 here thirty three thousand dollars on mike tyson's coaching bro mike tyson coaching 
and mentorship and his courses and everything, right? So you buy like loads of them and it really fucking helps you and, and especially with communities. And so when I started to do this and I saw how valuable this was, I made my own and I'm not trying to like, you know, just subtly sell it to you or anything. If, if you agree with this mindset that you should spend money on like, you know, good money, expensive money, on these coaches, online or, or, uh, education, if you feel like you could learn even more from me, the only link that I've got in the description of this video is my private exclusive community. I had a free Discord server that had 200,000 people and it wasn't close and you know, no one even like was really close to each other. I didn't even use it. This is a private community that's got less than 300 guys and we're actually super fucking close. I'd like, we go on calls every single day if you wanna ask me questions, if you wanna meet me in person and we go hiking and camping and stuff, it's there. It's very expensive. So if you're watching this right now and you don't have money, don't, don't click on the link or anything it's fine it's a very expensive like premium monthly package that like is my it's like my private community and it's literally like the focus on my life now and it's that top link if you want to invest some money into it which i i genuinely think we should be doing this this isn't even me trying to like sell you something this is just genuinely like i've done this myself and i'm seeing huge return on investments because we should invest in our knowledge it's so fucking normal for everyone to go to university and to, to invest in their knowledge that way. So why is it so seen as so like bad or cringe or scammy or salesman or anything? these days when you can go and take all these courses and you can buy these books I, I see like dumbasses like we see these dumbasses on the comments sometimes saying like oh but books are a scam. And I'm just thinking, bro, that he's he's brain dead. Oh, but the coaching and, and mentorships is a scam. It's like, how the fuck is a, is a mentorship a scam when literally the way humans have learned from each other has been through mentorships for 100,000 years and only in the last like 200 years was school even an invention. Think about it. Schools didn't exist 200 years ago and for all of our lives, schools didn't exist. It was all just mentorships. It was all just like, there was a, an old mentor who takes on an apprentice and teaches him exactly what he knows. This is how humans have always learned. It's only in the last 100 years that the education system came in and reformed everything and made everyone fucking worse. So I think we should be ready to fucking invest in these things, to learn continuously, to stay with a student mindset. And finally, if you do get to this point and you followed a bunch of the previous life lessons, I really think the final life lesson I could give to you is to give back. Give, I know this sounds like so soft, but just trust me. Be a giving man who, who gives back to the community, who helps people, who is somewhat like 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 charitable who wants to make a positive impact on the world because at first i think you should just be selfish and focus on yourself you know build the success that you need to do you need to build yourself right but after a certain amount of time you are actually capable of helping other people make the same progress that you did and i think that all of us as men we should strive to become successful and you know men of character and everything and then we should strive to essentially like teach the same thing that we have just done and make it slightly easier or faster for the people who started, who are where we started. That's what I do with this YouTube channel. Now, of course, the thing is, you know, you want to know the truth. When you give back, you usually make more money. You usually get more as well. So when I give back and I'm literally just teaching you my learning lessons and I've been sat here for like over an hour and my throat is dry. Like, so this is painful for me, right? But the thing is, this video is going to make over a thousand pounds in just over an hour. Literally, so I've, I've made one grand by giving back and teaching you some things. It's like, this is how it will work. And of course, this is just specific to YouTube. But in general, the more people give back and give to charity and the more giving someone is, the more that they get. Usually people become more successful after you start giving back. So there is someone in your network right now who's struggling with a problem that you have already overcome. And you could spend some of your time teaching them how to overcome that problem. It's as simple as that. And this is how the human race was able to dominate because we just gave back and we taught each other what we knew so that the, the younger person can make the faster progress and then he can teach the younger person below him and make the faster progress. This is how we've always learned. And I just, I think that process is beautiful. If there's one last thing in this video, it's just see the generations of, of, of mankind, of humans, passing on this knowledge to each other with the hope that the younger generation can do what we did, but faster so that the human race just keeps starts expanding. And maybe one day we'll get to like dominating or, or exploring the, the space and, and the, the depths of the ocean. I just, I find that really, really fucking wholesome. That's like a really nice like purpose and, and mission for us as, as a species. If you're interested in my private community, go click on that top link in the description right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.